going forward, we need to be a lot more aggressive and progressive. Uh, I mean, aggressive and proactive in terms of reaching out to the international community uh, to tell the story of Hong Kong, the good story of Hong Kong, and also extend invitations for people to come to Hong Kong to see for themselves the opportunities that awaits them here. I mean, I'm leading a task force, including government officials, agencies that have been helping us to do a promotion about Hong Kong, like the Trade Development Council, Tourism Board. Uh, and also this task force will include members from the business communities, uh, particularly those from our key markets. So we will map out a strategy uh, to reconnect with the world and also craft out the messages that we should communicate with them and encourage them to come to Hong Kong. You said in an interview yesterday that you won't give up persuading uh, Saudi Aramco from the Middle East to get listed in Hong Kong. And actually, what are the challenges uh, facing the negotiation? And you also mentioned there are a lot of other companies in the Middle East. It's actually, they are in your radar. Uh, how many of them uh, are you uh, are being considered, and what kind of um, these what kind of businesses are these companies are involved? Well, you know, uh, the entire Middle East is growing, burgeoning. Uh, apart from Saudi Arabia, uh, UAE, Bahrain, Qatar. So, in our discussion with them, we realized that many of uh, these fund management companies are uh, interested in exploring the investment opportunities in this part of the world. Uh, Hong Kong, China in particular, uh, they have this incentive because of under the geopolitical situation, they do need to diversify and they want to seek better returns. And when we talk to those uh, Middle East companies, traditionally, many of them would go to the U.S. for listing, but now coming to Hong Kong, if they are internet, they are considered to be international companies. They listed are in Hong Kong and can, they can become eligible companies under the South Bank Connect. In other words, this company by listing here, they can have access to both international and mainland capital. And this added liquidity will provide support to their valuation. So the business case is clear. And for those uh, Middle East companies, if their market are mainland, Hong Kong, and Southeast Asia, then by listing here, they are closer to their customers. That also make good business sense. So uh, about how many companies are in your radar right now? Well, you know, my what colleagues and sectors? I are working very hard. Uh -huh. And these are only the beginning. Uh, well, next month, the chief executive will lead a delegation to the Middle East. And thereafter, I think there would be more uh, efforts uh, from the government uh, to bring our delegations over there. When you mentioned um, yeah. um, the government will invite uh, companies from the Middle East to Hong Kong, is it going to happen this year? We, we aim to. Yeah. Aim to. Uh, well, act, we aim to achieve that. And apart from Middle East companies, we are also encouraging uh, ASEAN countries uh, to organize their business delegation to Hong Kong. Uh, when I was in Bali uh, last, uh, last November uh, at the G20 meeting, I took the opportunity to meet with the Chamber of Commerce. I understand that they are organizing delegation to Hong Kong as well. Is it possible, hopeful, to see some of the companies from the Middle East to get listed in Hong Kong this year or next year? Well, it, it depends on a number of factors. But I think we have to continue to work hard and have a, a, have a strategy and have the persistence to, to pursue it.